This video contains spoilers. Don't say I didn't warn you, because I just did. Hey everyone, Dan Green here. I'm taking a break from my busy schedule as an important voice actor to talk to you about a movie I saw recently. It's called The Spiderwick Chronicles, starring Freddie Highmore, Seth Rogen, Freddie Highmore, Nick Nolte, Martin Short, Freddie Highmore, and Freddie Highmore. Yes, folks, Martin Short is in this movie. For those of you who thought his career had died after the Santa Claus 3, The Quickening, I'm afraid you are sadly mistaken. Let me start off by saying that this is the least believable movie ever made. Not because of all the magic and mythical creatures, or the fact that Freddie Highmore is playing an American, or even because Martin Short seems to have a movie career again. No, this movie is completely illogical, because none of the children play card games. I mean, it's a 90-minute movie. That gives them ample time to throw in a scene where a character is having a duel with another character, or maybe just to show someone restructuring their deck. But no, there's not even a trace of a dark magician. As a moviegoer, I was deeply insulted by this obvious discrepancy, and I wish to have my money back so that I might spend it on trading cards. So this movie is called The Spiderwick Chronicles. Why in the name of Harland Williams are there so many chronicles these days? You've got the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the Chronicles of Narnia, the Chronicles of Riddick, Sonic the Hedgehog Chronicles, Roughnecks the Starship Trooper Chronicles. Why aren't there any Dan Green Chronicles? So this movie is about, like, a bunch of angsty little kids, all played by Freddy Highmore. Yes, even the girl. All living with their highly strung mother, who all go to live in this run-down old house in the middle of nowhere. There they find this field guide that allows them to see hordes of magical CGI creatures, including Nick Nolte, who has been appropriately cast as the CGI equivalent of Satan. Apparently, CGI Satan wants the field guide so that he can capture all the Pokémon in the world and complete his Pokédex, making him the most envied trainer in the whole of the Spiderwick universe. Or something along those lines. Wasn't really paying attention. Freddy Highmore, whose testicles have finally dropped after 25 years, was obviously trying to affect an American accent for this movie. He does a fairly good job, although there is another character in this movie who is also intended to be American. But when we actually meet her, she turns out to be played by veteran British actress Joan Plowright. Why a woman who has been acting for several decades couldn't be bothered to change her accent while acting opposite a teenager playing not one but two roles, both with differently nuanced voices, is a mystery. Perhaps Joan Plowright needs a little kick in the chesticles. You hear that, woman? I'm calling you out, Mrs. Laurence Olivier. As I've mentioned, Freddie Highmore plays twins. Why they needed him to play both characters is beyond me. It doesn't serve the plot in any significant way. It just makes you go, wait, which Freddie Highmore is that? Is it the angsty Freddie Highmore, or the really, really angsty Freddie Highmore? Apparently, the characters were twins in the novel as well, but this seems like one of those details you could easily skip when making the translation from page to screen. Unless you happen to be one of those anal fan brats who throws a hissy fit if Harry Potter isn't acting like a huge gimpy bitch like he was in the books. Not that I've read them or anything. If it doesn't have children's card games, I'm not interested. Quidditch, don't make me laugh. I've got your golden snitch right here, Rowling. Now, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, even though the film does an ample job of that all by itself, but I really need to talk about the ending because it is one of the most bizarre endings I've ever witnessed. And I've watched Eraserhead, upside down, while tripping on acid. There's only one way to describe it, and that's by telling you about what happens with words from my mouth. And I'm not making this up. Seth Rogen eats Nick Nolte. You heard me right. Seth Rogen eats Nick Nolte. It's like something out of Silence of the Lambs. Except it's Seth Rogen and Nick Nolte being eaten by Seth Rogen. It was pretty disturbing. I prefer to watch Seth Rogen accidentally impregnating young women, not devouring famous character actors from such films as The Hulk and Another 48 Hours. By the way, this movie is based on a series of children's novels. 
Apparently, it isn't a very faithful adaptation, but after doing some research, I can conclude that neither the movie nor the books involve card games. So they're both as worthless as each other. I give this movie one and a half Dark Magicians out of four. It was rather like watching Joey try to duel Seto Kaiba. It's so pitiful you end up feeling rather bad for laughing at it so damn hard. But then you remember it's just Joey, so you carry on laughing anyway. I'm Dan Green, and this was my two cents. Which, when compared to your two cents, is like 50 bucks. Thank you. I'm Dan Green. What a great day we had! <laughs> Shut up, Spider-Man, or I'll tell everyone you're Peter Parker. You're my favorite pal. That's nice. Can a hero get a hug? No.